A long time ago, on the top of the hill overlooking Lolling City, there was a people just call it and quat, jade and quat. This stone horse has a very strange characteristic. Anyone who wants to enter this area must have its permission. Only when the horse neighs to show its satisfaction can the traveler continue his journey. But when the traveler does not make it fit, his horse kneels down on its front legs and nothing makes it take a step forward. In that rolling hilly area, who would want to go on a palanquin? There are only narrow and winding trails, and can only be traveled by horse. For that reason, no mandarins in the city or the king and number 39's envoys could ever enter the small town of Lolling. Therefore, poor people here have never had to pay taxes and always live peacefully and happily in the mountains and forests. You think right, at the court people were not satisfied with that, and many times sent envoys here, but their horses always knelt before the kicking horse and did not move an inch, to the point that the envoys were gone. There is no other way than to return. You can imagine how much the people here love and respect the stone horse because thanks to it they do not pay taxes to the emperor. But the emperor did not like that at all. He wanted to possess the stone horse so that no enemy could attack him. So he ordered to prepare an expedition to capture the horse and bring it to the court. But one night before the army reached Lolling, the stone horse disappeared, as if swallowed by the earth. The emperor and number 39's envoys searched the whole area for months turning over rocks and soil but could not find it. In the end, they had to return empty-handed to save their lives. Your Majesty, it is no longer there, it has disappeared the delegates said fearfully. We searched the entire mountain range, examining every crevice, not minding the danger, but could not find the horse anywhere, it had disappeared, no one knew where. It was heaven save him. And quat. That and number 39. S it the emperor whispered. They could n and hash 39. T find the horse, but they also hurt my ears with the story of heaven and number 39. S rescue. It and number 39. S too much. And quat. And he raised his voice and said, very good. Because you don and number 39, T bring back the stone horse, you will lose your head. And the emperor and number 39's order was carried out. Immediately after that, the emperor chose another group of troops to go to Laoling. He gave an order before departing, if you don and number 39, T have a fighting horse, don and number 39, T go back. Otherwise, you will share the same fate as those who went before you. Poor unfortunate messengers. They turned over every straw and lolling for months without seeing a sign of the horse. They went into homes to question people, they talked to old people and young people, but it was only a waste of time because the answer was always the same. And quat. There are so many fighting horses everywhere. And quat. What else can they do? They went back to the fields, and when they saw a stone that more or less resembled a horse, they picked it up. So much so that after just a short time, they collected almost all the stones in the area. When they returned with the collected artifacts, the emperor was surprised, but because the stones had a strange shape, he finally believed that they were related to the stone horse, and he came out. Ordered them to be arranged in front of the royal palace. A while later, something strange happened. One stone hissed like a snake, another hooted like an owl, another roared. Like a lion, and the last stone growled like an angry bear, making noise and commotion. 
All those chaotic sounds created a terrible thunder and the palace shook as if it was about to collapse. The emperor was shocked and shouted loudly, You have brought back these terrible stones, what should you do now? Throw them away! The servants were frightened, but no one dared to disobey the emperor and number 39's orders, and they ran forward intending to each carry a stone to take away. But before they could get close, they heard a loud explosion, the stones turned into a volcano. The fire was hot, causing the royal palace to catch fire and burn to ashes in a very short time. The emperor escaped death by a hair and number 39's breadth. But his bottomless greed was not satisfied, motivating him to go to Lolling himself to capture the magical stone horse. He rode his horse and led the army straight to Lolling. The kicking horse did not want to cause more trouble for the people. It appeared again lying motionless on the hill. When the emperor and his entourage approached, his horse accustomed to battle bowed its head and knelt down obsequiously like a sheep before the kicking horse. Behind it, all the horses in the royal entourage also knelt down. The emperor was furious. You will see how I submit. He shouted as he jumped on the back of the stone horse. Arching its back its four hooves shining in the air, it kicked violently, and the emperor fell to the ground, his head broken. Above, the stone horse stood calmly and silently. Thank you for joining us for today's fairy tale. We hope these stories bring joy and meaning to your day. If you love our channel, please hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any exciting tales. Wishing you a good night and sweet dreams. See you in the next story.